secondary burial rites is the term, right? Or secondary burial is what it's called oftentimes. Basically, like I said, a person being buried twice. The classical example of it is a person gets buried in the ground, then that person disintegrates, turns into bones, all of the flesh disintegrates, it rots away, and then people dig up those bones, probably clean them or something like that, and bury them the second time somewhere else. So that's a classical example of a secondary burial. Actually, quite a few societies all over the world do that. A cremation, he says, could be considered a secondary burial rite also because person is buried twice, essentially. Uh, he or she is buried once when the body is burnt initially. That's actual rite of burial, right? So a body is burnt to ashes. And then those ashes are buried somewhere, uh, you know, like you've seen maybe in some movies, maybe like some Hollywood movies, right? They take the ashes and maybe scatter them in the ocean or something like that. So they bury that person or what's left of him or her, that box of ashes, they uh, scatter them uh, in the ocean or something like that. Or sometimes you even see ashes being stored in the house, in the urn, uh, like in a container. Um, so when those ashes actually get buried, that could be considered a second, second burial, right? And um, the, an interesting example to me was when he started talking about uh, Orthodox Christian religion, right? And that brought some of your guys' attention to, um, attracted, I, I mean, some of your attention. Uh, I think Julia asked this question in, uh, in her write-up you know, sort of what's going on here? Why are we, you know, like a lot of Russian people are Orthodox Christians, but this idea seems sort of wild to us, right? That uh, this kind of secondary burial, you know, uh, waiting for the bodies to turn to bones and then burying them again. So, and actually we do have this tradition, right? Which is uh, kind of strange, but it's a fact. And of course, not uh, this tradition is only reserved for a certain category, for a very, very small category of people. Um, and uh, you guys know what Parker Pearson is talking about, right? Kind of, uh, was it surprising to you or do you know of this tradition? Like what exactly was he talking about when he talked about Greek Orthodox and Russian Orthodox? any ideas, you know, how and why do Orthodox Christians conduct secondary burials? Because, you know, we don't engage in cremation, that's for sure. So, Vlad, go ahead. I'm not sure, but maybe it's about uh, relics. I mean, this uh, remains of uh, uh, people who was so I forget for good for charge. I mean, like this old um, bones for like, people pray. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's kind of exactly what he's talking about is this idea, you know, of uh, of saints in the Orthodox Church, uh, saints or being sort of sanctified there is a process to it, right? It's uh, when they announce someone to be a saint, one of the conditions is that the body needs to be not sort of disintegrated. And the best way for me to just say it in Russian, right? meaning they need to be sort of intact. Uh, not turn into bones. That's sort of the classical version of it. So what happens is, this is sort of my understanding from what I from what I've gathered. Um, let's say a person dies, like a monk or something like that, 
a person who's been leading a righteous life, who's been adhering to all of the rules and who has certain authority and respect during his life. And it's a him, but could be a she also in, uh, in the Orthodox church. So after that person dies, there may be some reports that start coming to the church that at the site of their grave, for example, people come and ask for things and those things come true or miracles begin to happen at the site of the grave of that person of the initial grave. And so what happens, apparently, they dig up the grave. Uh, they dig up the grave. Uh, certain people from the church with witnesses and stuff like that. And they examine the actual body to see, okay, is the body нетленная or is it тленная, right? And the specific criteria, I don't know. No one really knows. I don't think there is like a manual in the church, you know, as far as how, what level of disintegration we need to look at to determine, okay, is this body, does it qualify as being, you know, not sort of disintegrated, not eaten away by worms? Because you, you're actually looking at different stages of decomposition. And... Um, and the time period is also important, right? Do you go and examine the body? You probably don't want to do it like two months after, two years after, or 20 years after. That's all sort of, uh, I mean, the church knows that. And I don't know if there are any specific rules or not, but the fact is they excavate the body. They examine the body. If the body is determined to be nitlenne, and they look at things like smell, you know, uh, bloating, all kinds of things like that. Then that person is sanctified. They are confirmed to be a saint. And that body is then reburied. They don't just cover up the hole, but they take this body. Sometimes they partition that body. Okay, parts of that body may go to one church. Parts of it go to another church. Most often the entire person is reburied usually in a significant place, like in the altar, behind the altar, underneath the altar. So a lot of old Russian churches have someone, a saint, buried underneath the altar. Some of the most significant sort of big Russian churches in the European part of Russia, underneath the altar or behind the altar, there is one of these types of bodies buried. Or... Uh, they're, they could be buried, buried in, in an ossuary. So he mentions that term, like basically a stone kind of vault that's also in the church. Or uh, parts of that body could serve as relics, just like Vlad said, and they could kind of disperse through different churches. Maybe some people may have personal items of the saint or parts of the body of the saint, for example. So this is what uh, Parker Pearson meant. And it's kind of interesting. I mean, I've never really thought of, you know, sort of Christian Orthodox tradition engaging in secondary burial, but they actually do. Um, and uh, it's kind of an interesting, interesting spin on this. Uh, and just in general, that, that could be an interesting topic of uh, sort of, uh, of research, you know, um, but that, that's something that exists. Abnormal, right? Because if you just find a burial, person is laying there, everything is what's called articulated. When we say an articulated skeleton, that means everything is where it's supposed to be, right? Maybe it's moved a little bit by the natural processes like rodents um, crawling around there or, or ground moving uh, due to freezing and thawing, for example that creates some movement. So the body won't be exactly in the same spot, but overall you excavate your, your burial and you see the person lay there. Okay, you're not gonna think, oh, that's a secondary burial, right? You're gonna think that's just a regular burial. But when you start seeing something unusual going on with the bones, that's when you kind of start um, thinking about a secondary burial. And, and the example that Parker Pearson provides is uh, 
from this British Neolithic, right? There was a tomb, a bunch of people buried, but no heads, no heads or few heads. Okay, let's say like 10 people buried, but only two heads. And then they excavated another tomb in the same region and they found too many heads. Okay, they found maybe like eight heads and, and that's it. So that could be, you could at least hypothesize that these people ex like buried the people originally, excavated the heads and reburied just the heads in another place. But of course the heads could be buried at the same time, right? We don't know that for sure. Uh, maybe they just partitioned the body and buried it in two locations, which would not be a secondary burial because for it to be a secondary burial, a certain time period needs to elapse between sort of the original burial and then the secondary burial. If it happens at the same time, it's not a secondary burial, it's just a weird burial. So it could possibly be a secondary burial where they, you know, waited until the bodies uh, disintegrated, for example, and heads being sort of maybe the primary part, this like identity of this individual that's your ancestor or something like that you transport the head into this new place, maybe a new village where you settled for your ancestors to bless this spot or something like that to bring you good luck and you bury the head of your great grandfather in a new, at a new location. So something like that could happen. And what uh, Maria said is also very interesting. That's more of a direct sign of secondary burial or what he calls bone, bone bundles. And they're exactly what, what they sound like. Uh, they're bundles of bones, basically. Uh, let me show you, for example, what, what they would look like. So, so that's a bundle of bones, which you see here. This could not be done to a live person. I mean, these are not human bones, first of all, right? Uh, in this bundle here but these are animal bones, but something like this is what Parker Pearson is talking about. For example, if these are, you know, let's imagine, I don't know, different long bones of a human, you couldn't tie them like that while there was flesh on them, right? Because there would be space between the bones, right? And even if you, if you took an ar two arms and two legs, tied them up like that, by the time these bones disintegrated, that rope would be like very loose and, you know, this bundle would not look like that. So basically what I'm trying to say is these people worked with bones that did not have flesh on them already, right? So the flesh disintegrated, the flesh rotted away. And that means that people were working with clean bones already to do something like that with them. So when we see something like that, we know people are not working with dead bodies, they're working with bones. And that's a sign of a secondary burial. Another feature, and I'll try to explain it, how cut marks are related to this, okay? Um, I'm not trying to be funny or anything like that, just kind of bear with me. So let's say we find a, a skull, and next to a skull where my hands are, there are feet, for example, right? We find the skull skull and two feet placed next to a skull. And on these feet, we don't find any cut marks, right? No cut marks, as you see here. Cut marks is something you leave with a knife or an ax. So what that tells us is that these feet, you know, they had to be chopped off, they had to be cut off like for me to, to place two feet next to my head, I need to sort of chop them off, right? Cut them off with something. But if there are no cut marks on these feet, that means they were placed there after they disintegrated, after all those joints and all of the connective tissue uh, righted away. Then somebody dug up that grave and picked up the feet or picked up the bones and just placed the bones as opposed to cutting the feet off while the person was alive. So that kind of tells us that it did not happen at one moment, 
unless that person was like a very skilled butcher or something like that who knew human body and who could cut past the bone and not leave a single cut mark on the bone. Um, that's also possible, but not very probable because it's possible to do with bodies of animals that you know that you have been butchering. For example, a chicken, you can definitely partition the chicken without leaving a single cut mark. That's easy. You just go between these kind of joints. You know, you, you go and cut in, oh, sorry. Uh, you go and cut in these areas here where the, jo where the bones meet um, and don't leave a mark, but to do it to a human body, very unlikely, very unlikely that someone, you know, knows and has experience with human anatomy like that. So that's kind of how cut marks or the absence of cut marks is related to secondary burials. Um, is that kind of clear? I hope. Okay. Um, so we see even in, um, in the Southern Urals, you know, where I work, we definitely see some strange funerary customs of, uh, you know, s there was something strange going on. We don't always find articulated bodies. We find uh, limbs, for example, in burials. We find teeth of other people in burials. You know, all kinds of interesting things are going on. It's not always a straightforward situation. We find an, an arm that's like some long distance away from the actual body, things like that. So in prehistory, people definitely engaged in some complicated burial rituals that we will probably never completely understand.